So a little bit of housekeeping as always. First lessons for the education series are on the Marvin Medium. I did drop those links into the announcements and the education channel. So you should be able to see and access those at your leisure. They're up on YouTube as well. So go ahead and check those out if you need to. Market turmoil. Gosh, it's been a fun, what, month now? Six weeks in the crypto world? Yeah, everything's been pretty crazy lately. And that's to be expected in new markets like that. That's just part of being really early to something. You're going to have the ups and the downs. There's going to be some hard times here. And that's okay, guys. It sucks. It hurts. Everybody's bag is down. Kyle jumped on last week and talking about his portfolio being in ruins right now, but that's okay. We're not playing, we're not gambling here. We're not playing short term stuff. We're playing for the long game. And we know that's going to be coming back up. That's why we're doing this education series here so we can make sure that you guys are still getting rewards, making some money, growing your bag in this time so that when everything starts taking off, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. Keep holding on, keep living your life, doing other things, follow your base case strategy, and, and don't get too wrapped up into the emotions. All right, T's and BitMart are on hold, but they're ready. Like Kyle mentioned last week, everything is good to go with BitMart. All the T's been crossed, the I's dotted, money's paid, stuff like that. Again, we're simply waiting for the market to turn around so we can capitalize on that before we do any listing on BitMart. NFTs, um, you've been seeing some of those dropped into the chat over the last week. Um, those are looking pretty cool. I know Queen, Mo Queen Monique is building out our Discord server for all the good NFT stuff that you can do in there. And... She should have an update on you sometime soon here. I know she was doing a little bit of traveling last week, so I'll wait to get a better update on her there, but everything is ready to go. Again, just waiting for the market to turn around, waiting to capitalize on that, and we'll carry on as usual then. In the meantime, I'll just be continue working on the game, building that out. Again, things are bad like this. You know, the team's quiet. It means that they're busy working behind the scenes getting all that stuff ready. We can take advantage of that upturn when it does come back, all right? Keep the positivity. You guys, amazing community. Y'all are so great. That chat still continues to be positive, continues to be fantastic. Y'all are doing a great job educating any new Marvinots that are coming in here, helping them feel good about the project. So keep it up. We really love it. And most importantly, most importantly, Keep living, L-I-V-I-N, living. It's a Matthew McConaughey term. Love what he talks about with that. Love him as an actor, as a person. He's got a great philosophy on life and how to make the most of everything that you're given. Keep doing the good things. So check him out. He's got a great book, Green Lights. A really good read right now, or even better listen if you're an audible person. I highly recommend checking his book out there. All right, let's go on to... A recap of the last few lessons. So by now, if you've been following along, you should have your FU number, right? That was lesson one. Really dove deep into that and figure out exactly how much money you need to live the life that you want. Now, how we can optimize for enough instead of more, because if you're always looking for more, that's how you're going to get wrecked. But we want to know enough. So once you know enough, you can start to plan a strategy that will get you there. So if you're still unsure of what your number is, definitely recommend going back into lesson one, spending some time on that. Use the certainty app that the Wolf Den guys have created. It's fantastic. They've got a really good little portfolio a tracker in there where you can put your money in and I'll show you if you're on track, off track, things like that. So check that out. Lesson two last week is about getting started staking your Marvin BNB pair in the NightSwap ecosystem. Hopefully you have started doing that. That's really the foundation right here. A lot of what we're talking about with the NightSwap stuff based on getting that Marvin back that you already have. You know, that's one of the great things about our partnership with them. 
Kyle's relationship with Nick and those guys over there is puts all of us Marvinots in a great spot to, to start earning those night rewards, start taking those night rewards and you know, dropping them back into the Marvin raid pool. If you want to keep filling your Marvin bag or the guard pool or the night pool, or whatever you believe in, whatever you think is going to be a great long-term investment for you. And next week, I will get a little bit more into some of the different things you can do with that. Um, but you should at least be staking some Marvin b and And remember, like, wherever you are, just start. If all you can put in is $50, $20, $100, it does not matter. Time in the market is the biggest predictor of long-term success. So whatever you can do and whatever you can start with, do it and do it responsibly. Remember, do it responsibly. But start, because that starts compounding, compounding, compounding. Last week, we talked about how if you start with a penny and you double it every day for 30 days, one penny doubled every day for 30 days, you end up with something like $5 million. So it's pretty incredible stuff what compounding can do. And the longer you're in the market, the more you can take advantage of that. Lesson two was also covering understanding how to use NightSwap, understanding that whole ecosystem and how to take the night that you're earning from your Marvin BNB pair, put into some of the different pools and keep compounding and keep building up all those different assets and diversifying. All right. So hopefully that that's all made sense so far. And again, if you are unsure still, something's not clear, go back, go to lesson one, lesson two. And if it's still unclear, we've got the question, uh, question form attached to each lesson. So you drop your questions in there and I'll get those dive in a little bit deeper on whatever questions you have. If need be, I can do an extra lesson or something like that on those. All right. And then the final thing that we talked about in lesson two, starting a side hustle to fund your base case. I don't know what your current situation is as far as income and expenses and different things like that, but highly recommend starting some kind of side hustle that you can fund your base case with so that you just have that money that you can keep putting into your base case strategy. Um, you should be doing that. If you want to get ahead, if you want to be successful, you got to have a side hustle. Unless you're uber successful already in your career and you've been doing it for 10 years, 15 years, and you reached a high level and you have a lot of extra income, I highly recommend side hustle. Like when I first started in marketing and working for myself and doing all that, I worked a regular job. I did my marketing stuff and I kept building it up and building it up. I was doing that and I still take on side projects here and there, do a bunch of other stuff because the more different ways that you can earn money, the more that you can diversify that income stream, the more you're going to be protected from any one thing exploding and one thing going under. That's why we're talking about night swap and wolf den is it's showing you how to create assets. Create assets that create assets. It just compounds, it just keeps feeding into itself, all right? So today, we are going to start with a high level overview of research to avoid getting wrecked. Doing your research is so incredibly important. I've been guilty of not doing my research before jumping into a project. Kyle has, everybody on the team has, I'm pretty sure everybody in crypto, unless you've got a really strong trade side background, we've all gotten wrecked at some point. We've all made a mistake. And I guarantee if you had done a little bit of research, if I would have done a little bit of research on the project first, it probably wouldn't have happened. All right. So main three topics we're going to be covering today is do the work. Don't FOMO. My goal by the end of this series is for you all to be sick of me telling you to do the work um, because I'm going to repeat it over and over again because I cannot stress how important it is to do the work. You have to put the work in. You have to do it. There is no other way. Ask anybody who's been successful. They do the work. I, I've been putting in probably 16, 18 hour days the last couple of weeks here working on projects, things for you guys, other stuff. I'm always doing the work. I'm always putting the research, learning, 
building my skills, things like that. And if you want to be successful, you have to do that too. There is no other way. So internalize that, get that into your brain, and you will be successful. I'm going to talk about what I look for in a good project and the things that I'm looking at when I'm deciding if I want to invest in something. And the final thing is never optimize for the best case. All right. So we never want to optimize for the best. And we'll get more into that at the end. It'll make more sense at the end when we get there. So let's dive in, folks. All right. So again, nothing works until you do. I will continue to stress this. I will continue to stress this. This is advice I give to you all of my friends. I have a buddy that owns a painting business and he was asking for marketing advice the other day. I was telling him some stuff to do. Uh, dude, you just got to do the work. The reason it hasn't been working out is you haven't put the work in. You tried it, you dabbled, but you haven't done the work. So do the work, and it'll pay off. All right. Because luck isn't repeatable, hope is in a strategy. All right. You know, you can get lucky sometimes. People looked into Shib, Doge, Floki, whatever it might be. But if you look into something, if you just pick something, it goes up. Like, how do you pick the next thing? Because now you have tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars that you're going to try to invest in another project and it's going to get wrecked. Now, that's why something like 90, 95% of lottery winners end up broke in a couple of years because they just got lucky. They don't actually know what they're doing with their money. And the next time they try to do something with it, it's all gone because you get confident and you think you make a bigger play, really capitalize on everything that you made. And next thing's all gone. All right. And hope is in a strategy. That's why it's so important to do the research. You can't just put your money into something and hope that it goes up. If all you can tell someone about a project that you invest in is, oh, I hope it'll go up. I think it'll go up. I want it to go up. That's not good. No, that's not good. That's not a place of confidence. That's not a place of power. And if you rely on hope, you're always going to rely on someone else. And you're always going to be waiting for someone else for the information to do the right thing, to do the work, stuff like that. So you're always going to be behind. And you. Usually those people are the ones that end up with nothing in the end. All right. And this is another one I cannot stress enough. If you're feeling FOMO, walk away. Yeah, if you see a start, uh, if you see a chart start to pump, if you see those big green candles come up and you want to get in and go, oh my God, this is taking off. I got to get in right now. Walk away. Just stop and walk away. Go do something else. Take a walk. Find another hobby because more than likely you're going to end up getting wrecked because what ends up happening when a chart starts to pump, all the people that got in before you for going up, up, these people that got in down here, they see it up here, they're going to sell, that's going to go down. And then everybody else, all these people that FOMO'd in somewhere up at the top here are going to be like, oh crap. And they're going to start to sell. That's how humans work. That's how emotions work. You get excited, you're really excited. And then when it doesn't come true, you equally as afraid. All right. So those big pumps almost always equal the big losses. And again, hope isn't a strategy. Luck isn't a strategy. So if you're feeling that FOMO, just walk away. There will be other projects. It's still so early. And one of the great things about right now is I know the market's bad. I know it's terrible, but it's shaking out a lot of bad projects, shaking out a lot of bad actors, shaking out a lot of people who have been taking advantage of how early the system is and they're getting wrecked. That's why we're seeing things like Celsius fall off. Like they were over leveraged and not too familiar with everything that they were doing with that project. I don't really get into the lending side of things very much, but we're seeing a lot of that happening right now. And that's okay. That's good. That's a necessary part of the market maturing. And now we're going to start to see projects emerge from that, that are taking those lessons and doing the things the right way. And it's going to be a lot easier to spot the projects who aren't doing the right things because now we have a reference point. Now we have 
precedent. We have something that's happened that we can kind of use and look at and be like, oh, this looks a lot like Terra. This looks a lot like Celsius. This looks a lot like any number of other projects that you're seeing implode right now. So it's okay. This is a great time to be here and to learn and to get a really good education so that the next time things start to go bad, you can protect yourself and you can know what to do and be able to act logically and rationally and emotionally. Like the people who are still doing well are a lot of them are the people that got wrecked in the last bear market. What was that like 2018, 2019? This is a great learning experience. Take that, use it, do the work, do the research, educate yourself so that the next time this comes around, you can be one of those people that see it coming, short a bunch of positions, make your money, move it all into stable coins, ride it out and then have all that money when those great buying opportunities come in. We haven't seen ETH or Bitcoin this low in a long time. And for those people who were here before, it's gonna be a great buying opportunity for them. And they're gonna keep doubling, tripling, 10Xing, 100Xing their wealth. And you guys are in a great position to take advantage of that next time. So don't worry, you're still early. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, and to that end, how you can prepare. The first thing you want to do is seek to understand. You know, that's why we're talking about doing the research and putting the research in. You have to be able to understand first. You have to have an idea, a basic idea of what's going on. And from there, you can take that understanding and start to develop skills. What that looks like for you, for me, for Kyle, for anybody else. It's completely different. It's all based on personality, what you're interested in, things like that. But you can start developing skills or researching skills. I was a huge nerd back in college when it came to nutrition and fitness. My Friday nights, I, my Friday nights, instead of going out to the bars, I would sit in my room and academic peer-reviewed papers on nutrition and physiology and endocrinology and all that kind of stuff. Because I did all that research back then, it really honed my research and skills. So when I come into new things, new market, I have a leg up. I can learn faster. I've developed those skills. Like I've been focusing on how to think, mental models, frameworks of thought, things like that. So I'm developing those skills that I can expedite my learning process. All right. Then from there, once you have kind of those basic little skills, then you can start to make predictions. What I see too often is people make predictions before they understand, oh, market's going to go up. This project's going to do well, whatever it might be. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but they have no idea why. They don't have those skills to fall back on and understand why that prediction was right or wrong. It's not a matter of being right or wrong. It's how you got to that decision. All right, that's the most important thing. If you try to make those predictions too soon, you get overconfident if you make the right one. But it's, again, it was luck. And luck isn't repeatable. So you go and make a prediction again, and then you get wrecked. All right. So keep these things in mind, guys. Like I said, we're still early You're in a great position to learn and educate yourself through all this turmoil and volatility and stuff like that. So take advantage of that. I know it's so easy to get down and just be in those feelings and get depressed. But if you look at it from a learning mindset, what can I learn from that? What can I see? What can I understand? The next time it comes around, you'll be in a great position to take advantage of all that opportunity. Okay. Now doing the research. Give me a second, take a little water break here. Oh man, guys, we're already almost a half hour in. I was hoping to keep this one a little bit quicker for you, but I think we're probably going to run up on an hour here. So I appreciate everybody who's here on a Sunday. Your attention is, I know, really important. So I do really appreciate that. I hope you're getting some good stuff out of here. All right, let's keep going. Again, the research is so important. Like I was saying, I am um, a huge nutrition nerd back in, back in college, and I made a lot of dumb mistakes with nutrition. I tried a lot of really dumb supplements. I wasted a lot of money on those. 
ate a lot of really weird food. I would try all these different protein shakes and stuff like that were just terrible. It was a running joke in my family. They would hear me puking at least a couple times a month because of new concoction. All right. And that was because I wasn't doing my research. I was not doing my research before I did that. So stop. Do not pass go and do not invest until you do your research because that's how you're going to get wrecked. Again, stressing the importance of that work, putting that time in because there'll be other projects, there'll be other things to invest in. So it's okay. You can take that time. Don't fall into stuff. Take that time to really understand the project. And one of the best ways that you can understand something is get to the point of being able to teach it to someone else, especially someone outside of crypto. That's a really key thing. That's something I've been doing a lot lately, especially like diving into everything that the Wolf Den has to offer and Night Swap ecosystem, stuff like that. I've been talking to my friends outside of crypto and making sure I can explain it to them in a way that they can understand, even though they don't even know what a DEX is. They don't know the difference between a DEX and a SEX. They don't know any of that stuff. So if I can get them to a point of being able to understand, that's when I know I have a good understanding myself. And that may, that gives me the confidence. So try to teach it to someone else. If you have no one that's going to listen, write it out. Being able to write really helps you think through some of the things, be able to check your logic, be able to check your thinking, write a little lesson plan. As you go through the project, think these are the things I like. These are the things I'm looking for. This is the stuff that's missing. Write that out so that you can teach it to someone else. And a little caveat to that, you will never know everything. I'm guilty of this too. I'm the kind of guy that wants to know every little detail and aspect of whatever I'm looking into and researching it to the point where in the past, it's caused me to miss out on opportunities. It's caused me to try to go too deep before I do anything. So don't try to know everything that 80% 80% is pretty good. Now, if you have 80% of the knowledge, you can usually make a pretty confident decision here. And again, if you know that, then you can teach it to someone else. So don't try to know everything. Know enough so that someone else will understand if you're talking about it. And here again, you won't always be right. All right. This is really important too. This is really important on the kind of emotional, mental health side of things. You will not always be right. And that's okay. I'm not always trying to be right. It's impossible. No one's perfect. No one gets it right all the time. If you look at any of the great investors over time, they've made mistakes. Any of the great businesses over time, they've made mistakes. You know, I know a lot of people have been highly successful in business. They've made millions lost millions because they make mistakes, they make the wrong choice. But what's more important is that they have a decision-making process that can get them to set so the next time they are right. The time after that, they are right. And then as you go, you're right more often than you're wrong, but you will be wrong. Now, that's the reason why these millionaires and billionaires can lose everything and a couple of years later, be right back on top of the world. You know, they can have a business completely tank and disappear for six months, 18 months. And all of a sudden, boom, they're back. I have a lot of friends who have lost millions and then, oh, no, they're good. Talk to them a few years later. Yep, made it back because they know how to make decisions that get them closer to it. All right. So that's okay. Making mistakes is a good part of the learning process. Don't let it deter you. Don't lose everything and just say, oh, good, I'm done. You know, don't do that. Stick with it. Find a way around it. That's why those side hustles are so important. That's why having other things in your life is so important. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't make crypto your whole life. Well, that's other hobbies, other investments, other things like that. Spread it around. Have other things. So if one thing isn't going, it's not the end of the world. All right. So big things I look for in projects. And apparently I didn't write that down. It's in this or again this is what works for me you will find your own strategy based on your skills and if you can hear a little bit in the background i apologize kyle is on a call i can hear it echoing team 
utility. All right. So these are the big things I look for in a project and in this order too. First off, I talk with friends. I have a good network, built up a good network. Over my years of being in business, I have a lot of connected friends. I have a lot of successful friends. We're all constantly talking to each other about different things that we're seeing, um, things we're excited about, stuff like that. And that's usually where I first hear about different projects is through my friends. And as you grow, in this industry as you grow in your wealth and different things like that start developing that network and the best way to do that is provide value first. if you want to have good successful friends who like you and trust you provide value first start thinking about what can i do to help these people out what can i do to make their life easier what can i do to make their life better i can't tell you how much free marketing work I've done over the years, whether that's writing, whether that's strategy, whether that's looking at different parts of someone's business and just giving away for free and just providing that value for them. And time again, it comes back to help me because when I do actually need something from them or when a next opportunity comes up or they know someone who needs work for one of the skills I have, they come to me because they all go, wow. Frank's such a good guy. Like he helped me out. He never asked me for anything. That's great. So I know he's going to take care of that other person. I know he's going to make me look good for referring them, referring him. All right. So provide value first and you'll find, and you'll make a lot of really good friends. Okay. And just naturally as you progress throughout your journey, you're going to get more and more successful friends. Okay. And that's why you do the work. It's why you put in the work because high net worth individuals, successful people, they don't, they put in the work and they really, that's one of the first things that they look at is like, how hard of a worker are you? And if they see you as lazy, if they see you not doing stuff, they're not going to talk to you. They're not even going to bother because their time is so valuable. Why would they waste on someone who's not even doing the things in the first place to help themselves? All right. That's why I keep stressing doing the work develop those skills, provide value. It will pay off. Okay. Next thing we look for is the team. And the biggest thing I'm looking for on the team is their past and, and personality slash It'd be nice if we could write as fast as we could think. All right, there we go. So, their past. What has what has this team done? What have these individuals done in the past that's done well? What kind of success have they had, both inside and outside crypto? Especially with crypto being such a new market, I'm always looking at what is their experience outside of crypto? How have they been successful before crypto? Because that's super important. If they have a long history of success that's good if they've been on a few projects in crypto and that's all they've done then maybe they got lucky you know a lot of people got lucky early on so i really want to know their past i want to know what projects they've worked on what business they've started different things like that personality and character these are, are kind of go hand in hand and are probably some of the most important things especially someone's character you know i want to know again are they going to do the work? Okay. It comes up all the time. Yeah, I was going to be so sick of this word by the end of it. I'm, gonna be, I'm, I'm happy about that because doing the work is so important. So like, I want to know if that team is going to do the work. And when things get tough, when things don't go their way, do I trust that they'll put in the work to make it right, to make it better, to stick around? So I look for different things like that. And again, a lot of that comes from their past. If I can see in the past that they've put in the work to build something cool, Great. Over time, I've just got. All right. So, start the recording. Share the screen. And to Greg, who posted in the chat, it, it has been recorded and it will go up on the YouTubes when we're done. 
Still got a little bit more to go. I appreciate y'all bearing with me for my ongoing tech issues. But hey, like, <laughs> that actually happened at a great time. You know, so many people would have something like that happen. Technology doesn't work. Things stop working, whatever it might be. And they'd be like, oh, nope, I'm done. I failed. Whatever. I can't go on. It wasn't perfect. And just stop. But who cares? Like, mistakes happen. Things happen. We can move on. Carry on. I'm still going to do the work. I'm going to start that video chat however many times. If I got 15 video clips I got to add together, so be it. But do the work. Yeah. So look at people's character. I think that's where I was. I don't think the too much got lost there. Look for people who have done hard jobs before, hard things before, military, service industry, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you, Kovi. Appreciate the kind words. I love you guys too. Y'all are amazing. You know, this jumps into the personality part here. Marvin Knot team is so fun, so great. I like that's love these guys. You know, I know they're pretty quiet in the main chat lately because they're hard at work doing stuff, but talk to these guys every day and they're just fun to work with. They're fun to be around. And that's the other thing you want to, you want to know. Are the project owners fun people? Would you hang out with them? Or would you have dinner with them? Would you grab a beer with them? Would you invite them over to your house? Think of those kind of things. And that's hard to tell in a white paper, but once you get into the chats and once you get into the community and things like that, you start to get a sense of who they are as a person, what their personality is. Are they positive in the chat? Do they succumb to a bunch of hate and negativity and then start getting negative themselves? Or do they keep it positive? Those are all important things to look at, all right? So utility, I don't know what color do you want for utility? I'll do orange. All right, utility. Utility is so important here. We, I think we are pretty much done with the phase of those projects that kind of blow up only because of the community, social things like that. I think NFTs maybe might be more community focused on, I don't know a ton about NFTs. It's not really my thing, but utility is another critical piece. Cause it doesn't really matter how much all the rest of it works. If there isn't the utility there, and if there isn't the long-term utility and something like that's actually solving a problem, then it's never going to take off. You know, you can have the best market in the world, but if you have a bad product, no one's going to buy it. You know, you look back through history and see all those silly things, silly products like that just didn't take off. I've worked with lots of clients in the past who just simply had a bad product and it never went anywhere. They had all the great marketing, had the great videos, the cool graphics, things like that, but no product, no long-term success. So I really want to make sure that there's a good, strong utility and bonus points if it also bridges a gap into the real world too. And that's not to say the crypto space, the blockchain, the online stuff isn't real. It's more so like the non-technological world. So maybe we should say that. Um, Non-tech world. We'll call it that. Who cares? Does it have something? Could I go do something with this in my life without my phone? All right. And that's going to be really important right now. That's how we start to bridge that gap and start to get that mass adoption. So we're going to see more of these projects that bridge between the online world and the non-online world. And I'll get into that with the night swap. We're going to take a look at night swap pretty soon. That kind of connects all of this. But that utility piece is really important. If you see a project that doesn't have any utility, then walk away from it. That's one of the cool things about Marvin and meme coins in general. What I really like about the utility there is it makes a really easy connection for non-crypto people to start getting into this space. And that's why I'm a huge fan of meme projects, good meme projects, because it gives people something familiar that they can latch onto and understand that brings them into the crypto space. Marvin the Martian, it's iconic in can cartoon history, Looney Tunes, stuff like that. So it's really easy for people to make that connection and kind of get interested and excited about this. And that's what that's one thing that we're going to probably start to see a lot more 
as well, like NFTs and the games and stuff like that. People are just huge Looney Tune fans, huge Marvin the Martian fans are start to see that project and start to see the project and pick up on that and get interested because of that. And for any of you who are outside the US, this is a weird thing about America is we get really hyped up on some interesting things. Like I had a teacher who had a collection of Pez dispensers, which are these little like candy dispenser things. He had thousands of them. I like collecting stuff, Looney Tunes merchandise, Beanie Babies, stuff like that. So that's a really cool thing about meme coin. It gives that real world connection to this brand new thing that not everybody quite understands yet. All right. So look for those kind of utilities. Look for how it can bridge that gap into the non-tech world. And then finally, community is so important too. And yeah, I really don't need to spend a lot of time on that because y'all are awesome. It's one of the great things about you guys. It's one of the great things about Marvin. And it's one of the things that really attracted me to this project in the beginning when I was first to ask to come on board is the community is so awesome. And we're seeing the benefit of that right now. You know, when the market is terrible, when there's blood in the water and people are freaking out and projects are dying and stuff like that, having that strong community is going to make projects like Marvin, projects like um, Night Swap, persevere through that because we can all band together. There's something to be said about being miserable together. There is a, there's a bonding that happens with that. You look at military training, you look at different festivals, rites of passages and like fraternities, sororities, different things like that, where you form these great bonds with a community because you went through something difficult together and you persevered together. And that's so important because those difficult times really show who's been doing the right things and who's going to fall apart. So I want to see a strong community. It's so great to see a strong community. Like you guys are sitting here on a Sunday afternoon, listening to me, throwing memes up in the chat with people dancing around, stuff like that. That's what it's all about. Like that community piece is so important. Humans are communal creatures. So you want to see a great community in that. All right. So let's uh, take a look at night swap here. All right, so what I love about Night Swap, experienced and diverse team. They have a lot of real world background, a lot of really successful stuff outside of crypto. Util and utility, on and off the chain, the on-chain stuff that they have. The on-chain stuff that they have is that Night Swap ecosystem where you have assets that create assets and you can make money within within night swap keep filling your bag growing your bag it's just a really solid platform we'll get into their white paper in just a second here but i want to go through this off chain they're really big on making real life connections like i just found out there is a guy who lives about an hour away from me back home that's in the wolf den ecosystem i live in like a sparse area of the country where there's not a lot of crypto people around so it's really cool to see and we're talking about some of the same interests, cool stuff. So it's awesome. Like, yeah, I might have a real world friend out of that. You guys, hey, I surf. I know great spots to surf. I'm like, I've always wanted to learn how to surf. Like, maybe I'll come over this summer sometime and try surfing. Having that on chain, off chain utility is really cool. They've done a really good job of that. Education focus. As I have let on a few times already, I'm a nerd through and through. Own that, love that. I love to learn new things. I am always trying to grow, expand my mind, um, get better. So I love how much education they have. If anybody's looked at their white paper, it's dense, it's big. They have so many videos on YouTube. They have so much in their Discord channel. They're always trying to help you become better, think better, be a smarter investor. You know, that's what we're what I'm trying to do here with you guys and the education series. I want to educate you. I want to educate you so that you do make better decisions. Because if you're making better decisions, the project does better. We show you guys how to invest smartly, make money, keep your money, not lose your money. That's better for everybody. That means you invest more in Marvin, or at least you don't have to sell your Marvin. So we have more long-term strong holders. But if I show you how to use the Night Swap ecosystem, how to take that Marvin bag that you have, start growing it, you got to hold on to it longer. And that's going to be better for everybody. 
It's going to be better for you. It's going to be better for me. It's going to be better for the team. It's going to be best, better for the rest of the community. So we want something education focused. I love that. We want you to be better. That's what this is all about. It's the cool thing about crypto. And leverage. That's another really cool thing with NightSwap. Because of Kyle's relationship and friendship with them, Marvin got to be a part of it. We can leverage what we already have. Guessing pretty much most of the people in here, definitely the people on this call, probably have a Marvin bag. So you can leverage that already. Throw some BNB with it, whether it's $20, $50, $100, whatever you can do. You can leverage what you already have to start growing that wealth, start making that money. So before we move on, we're going to Jump over to the white paper. I'm just going to go through this really quick. I highly recommend you guys take a look at this yourself and really start to see like why it's so cool, why it's so awesome that Marvin is in here, why you should really get involved with this. They got some good stuff. Look, retail education, community connection. I want to jump down to so what problem we're solving. You know, they address the problem of. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. It's different. You know, if you, if you change this up, I'm going to have to go through this. But they talk about what they're trying to solve, what they're trying to do. Meet the wolf den. All right. So this is the, this is a big one. Read through that. Nick Pearson. Dude is incredible. Like he's done some awesome stuff. Scaled multiple seven figure businesses. You gotta know what you're doing to scale multiple million dollar businesses. 40 plus clients. Like people listen to him. This is telling me that other people look to him for advice and successfully exiting. Like he's able to build companies that can be sold. That's incredible. That's a superpower there. Got some testimonials from people. Got the core team goes through everything that these guys are doing. I'm not gonna read all this. But you can look through Doc Kev. He's really active in their Discord. He's a really smart dude. Where's the bell? All right, they don't have him in here. He's not part of the core team, but they've got a really great psychiatrist that's really deep in their ecosystem. Helps out a lot. That does a lot of really good trains. You'll see his stuff on their YouTube channel. He's a super smart dude. I love the fact that they have someone who's into psychiatry, psychology, you know, like looking at that mental game, looking at that performance. He's worked with Olympic athletes, high level performers, They've done some amazing things. So like a team is incredible. All right. The utility. Oh, here, real world impact. Jump into that. Now, again, not going to read all of this, but they have a lot of stuff that is, you know, they've got the NFWs to get into different in-person conferences that they help hold different levels of support and education. And they've got a lot of business owners who yeah, see, yeah, events. This CCA is, I guess, getting updated. Made a lot of changes to this white paper in the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna have to go back and read that. But <clears throat> all that to be said is these guys have a lot of real world utility with that off chain access and they have a lot of business owners in there they do a lot to form business connections where i go in there i talk about my marketing skills marketing abilities and somebody be like hey i've got this business i could use some marketing help can i hire you different things like that so that's super cool the education focus i can't i've lost count of the hours i've put into reading their medium articles reading their white paper re watching their youtube videos they have so much stuff and nick is Hopping on like almost every week, doing different updates, talking about different things, market updates, stuff like that. So tons of super, super cool stuff. So that's why I think Night Swap is incredible. I'm really excited that Marvin is part of it. Why I'm really excited that all of you guys have this opportunity to be part of Night Swap as well. <clears throat> and I think it's going to be really great. It's going to be really good, and I'm excited to keep teaching you guys more about this. And the last little bit for today, and definitely didn't make my hour goal either, so <laughs> I appreciate everybody listening. Again, I hope it's still making sense. You're getting some good stuff here. Best case equals the right case. This is another thing that they talk a lot about. So many people see all these crazy opportunities in crypto happening like where you can get thousand percent apy million percent apy 
these moonshots, things like that. And if your strategy is always focused on trying to find the best of the best, you're going to get wrecked because too good to be true. Always. I don't say too many things with absolute certainty, but this is one of those where too good to be true is a law. We've all seen it. We've all fallen for it. Too good to be true always is. So you don't want to optimize for that. You want to optimize for less. You want to build your base case around. Nick is, and we'll get more into this in one of the later lessons, but 70%. You now that's, that's the returns you should get every year. 70% return yearly is how they build the base case. All right. And that's a reasonable number. That's not 500%, 1000%, things like that. Because when you plan for less and things go well, you got extra. That's where you can collapse that time. That's where you can have that extra money to play around with some of those degen games, or you can throw a hundred bucks, 500 bucks, or a thousand bucks into a high risk project. And if it doesn't work out, who cares? It was free money anyways. You're already ahead. So who cares? But if it does, now you might add an extra 10,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand. Who knows? But if you plan for less, you can take advantage more. You can get more because things will go up. So plan for less, build your base case around less, and we'll get a little bit more into that in one of the later episodes. But you do need this foundation stuff first. That's why I'm focusing on this. To keep on with the high APYs here, any of those high returns, anything that's in that 500%, 200%, like that's not sustainable. You know, I know it's been a few days since I've looked at the Marvin APY in there, but it's been hovering around two. 200%. A few weeks back, it was at like 250. So high APY, it, it doesn't last. It goes down over time and that's okay. It's, it's fine. We don't mind that because that means things are stable. It means there's more, more people who believe in the project. So you can have a little bit more trust in it. So that 70% yearly APY is a much more reasonable number you know, when you maybe that coin doubled in that time. So that 70% or that 50% now actually is 40%. So keep an eye on that and stop chasing high return, but don't chase stuff over 500%. And that's the gen stuff. And yeah, be really careful with that and watch that a lot. And I don't know about you, but I got a lot of other things I like to do with my life that I don't want to be sitting there watching the charts all day. And the last kind of couple points here, reiterate again. Yes, I repeat myself a lot. That is the marker in me. The more you repeat something, the more it's going to stick. So you're going to be seeing this all the time. You have so much time, guys. You have so much time. It's still early. This the whole crypto thing, still so early. You have time. You know, I'm guessing most of you, probably in your 20s, maybe 30s, or even if you're in your 40s, like, you still have plenty of time. All right. So don't worry. Don't try to chase the million percent APY. Don't try to chase all that stuff. I'm getting some feedback here. What is going on? Uh, look like that. There we go. I think everybody's muted now. All right. And I say all of these things, we're doing all of this stuff so you can stick to your base case. As you build out this base case strategy, and I keep reinforcing this, so I keep reminding you that you're going to be able to stick to your base case. You're not going to get emotional. You're not going to want to sell when the market's doing market things. You're not going to get all hung up on emotions, you're not going to feel bad, things like that. You're going to stick to your strategy. Hey, I know this is work. I, I planned this out when I was in a logical, right frame of mind, clear head. So I'm just going to follow my strategy. I'm going to keep doing those things. I'm going to let my Marvin BNB compound in night swap. Yeah, I'm going to take the night earnings, might drop into night raid, might drop into guard raid, my auto compound it, whatever it is, whatever that strategy is for you. Move it into ETH, move it into Bitcoin, move it into real estate and other business. Like you can have that strategy. So you can stick to your base case. 
You don't make emotional decisions. You don't get all up in your feelings when market does market things because you can't do anything about that. The Fed has been stepping on the gas for the last couple of years, printing money, doing all that. And now they want to hit the brake and that's out of our control. There's nothing we can do about that. So all we can do is stick to our base case, follow that strategy and go live our life. All right. Just go live your life, have other fun things. I got my photography. I got my drone. I've been playing with that a lot this week. Yeah, I've got a photo shoot next week. That's going to be really fun. Looking really forward to looking forward to that. I'm living my life, following my base case strategy. Every couple of days, pop in a night swap, compound, move my stuff into guard, Marvin, night, auto compound. That's it. I walk away. Don't check my wallets. Don't check the charts. I follow my base case strategy. I go have fun with my life. And the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with, do the work. All right, guys. I hope I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. If anything doesn't make sense, make sure to drop a question in question form. Again, that's where I'm going to be answering questions. This chat, you guys are way too active in here for me to catch everything. So make sure that you drop in any questions in there. Thank you guys for joining me on this Sunday here because I will be traveling tomorrow. Uh, we will resume next Monday. Next Monday, whatever that date is. I'm terrible with date. Let's see, next Monday, 27th. Next, plus four, June 27th, maybe the 28th, depending on where you are in the world. It will be the same time, regularly scheduled broadcast. So until then, get back to work, build your base case, know your FU number, get your Marvin B into Night Swap, whatever it might be. Of course, do your research. We're going to get more, we're going to go deeper into research here research on night swap in the next couple of weeks <clears throat> excuse me and as always this is not financial advice do what's best for you make responsible choices be a responsible human being and get back to work and do your research guys i hope you all have enjoyed this and i look forward to seeing you next week appreciate your attention and your time today and take care guys